delighted to welcome Alan Quinlan back from his holidays and back to the show. Good morning to you, Alan. How are you keeping? Morning, on. How are you? I'm yeah, good, thanks. Good, good stuff. Nice, nice tan from the holiday. <clears throat> Well, I'm just after cleaning out 26 hens here in my mother's house in Tipperary, so uh, you, you'd, you're probably in a better seat, uh, more preferred seat than, than <laughs> my last half an hour. I'm a little bit late on, but we have a little business going here selling eggs, so it um, has to be done, cleaning out the hens this morning. And how is business going? Going very well. The, 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 the hen jar, as we call it, is filling up. Uh, lots of the neighbours calling to my mum's here and I bring bring some eggs back to Dublin. So business is good, uh, thankfully. We, we must uh, get stuck into the, the smaller business of uh, the, the rugby championship and what, what we've learned over the last couple of weeks, Quinny. Um, this is kind of like an interesting time where we can actually look at what's happening in the Southern Hemisphere, I think it's like the, the 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 real rugby that's on television at the moment. And we start to kind of, I, I guess think to ourselves how can Ireland play like teams or, or how can Northern Hemisphere follow this the Southern Hemisphere rugby just first off in terms of pure entertainment how much more have you enjoyed watching the rugby championship over the last little while I know disruption to the Australia New Zealand fixture has been a big factor but how much have you enjoyed it compared to the Lions tour that we had this year a mixture I think um, look uh, so much has been said about that Lions tour and every time I meet someone on the street now or, or chat to somebody they're all saying they're disappointed what they saw and um i suppose um the criticism hasn't been taken too too kindly i think um i see a lot of stuff with south africans uh journalists and stuff on online saying well uh they don't care about what style they play they're winning and in fairness they have a winning formula and uh, they did it at the world cup and they did it in the line series against all odds this this line series really um but you can't hide away from the fact on that everybody is saying that it was really disappointing to watch and you contrast that with the the rugby championship particularly those two Bledisloe cup games um the first one 33 25 um it's just the ambition to attack and look we go on about this a lot over the years um northern hemisphere versus southern hemisphere dry pitches um the skill set of New Zealand players as opposed to Northern Hemisphere. And sometimes we're in awe of that. And and sometimes it, there's there's an obvious difference. It's X Factor players who can just do absolutely brilliant things, particularly the the, the Pacific Island players that play for, for New Zealand, Fijians, Samoans, Tongans, their natural flair and ability just to attack from everywhere. And um I was really interesting listening to James Lowe. He did an interview this week and it was covered in all the papers that, you know, that, that is the mentality. And, and we know that we've heard it over the years. I've experienced it myself and it's all out attack. It's first option is, is attack. And I suppose, you know, the Northern hemisphere, the weather dictates a lot of it, but you know, the last number of years, rugby as a spectacle at times has been challenging to watch. Um, I understand from a player's point of view, from a coach's point of view, it's all about results. Uh, it's a results based, um, it's driven by results. And, you know, you want to make as, I just think if you were to sum up rugby at the moment, it's about making as, as little uh, mistakes as possible, mm. uh, playing in the opposition half, uh, forcing pressure uh, on the opposition. Uh, defensively being unbelievably hard to break down and then attack probably comes in at the end bit you know so it's 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 the flip side of that in the southern hemisphere and you know going back to the original point I was making no matter what any of the South African or Lions players or management say or World Rugby says it was dreadful stuff to watch mm. and that is the concern going forward we're going into a new season um you can't just throw the ball around willy nilly, but it's just that ambition and that that ability to to have a bit of variety in your attack. And I think Ireland under Andy Farrell realise now that they probably have to change a little bit. And we saw glimpses of that towards the end of the Six Nations and in the two summer tests. Obviously, there's less pressure in those summer tests against Japan and and USA, but those two games, um, obviously, uh, New Zealand hammered Australia. 57 22 in the second Bledisloe game and it was it was it was incredible stuff from from New Zealand and just the the intensity and the intent to keep going keeping the ball alive trying to put pace on it 
um, was was phenomenal. But you know, you got to get a mixture of that. New Zealand will come up come up here in the autumn, and if they go all out attack against Ireland um, or in their autumn tests, you know, they could make mistakes, and they'll they'll it'll be a different kind of pressure to deal with. But, but making those um, mistakes, Alan, is probably something that the All Blacks aren't too afraid of at the moment if they're racking up points in the 50s. No, they're not. And that was always always their mentality is to try and, try and um, you know, go at teams and attack teams. But they can dog it out as well, you know, and they can be quite cynical. Um, they have that aura about them and they try to use that to, to intimidate teams. And they're very, very physically imposing. You know, they're aggressive. Um, they're confrontational. And 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 that's part of their template that they don't expect this to happen. In fairness, they do earn the right a lot of the time to go wide. Um, they're very very aggressive in their carries and their their breakdown work. So you have to get the fundamentals of your game right: scrum, line out, and breakdown. They're they're the three big key areas that allow you attack. Um, but you know, I I went back to this and and I think this the second test in and you know after first attack for the Lions in, 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 in the South African, close to the South African 22, and they play a couple of phases off a line out, and then Dan Bigger drops 20 yards deep to put up an up and under. Um, you know, Billy LaRue knocked it on, and from the ensuing scrum, they get a penalty, and they kick three points, but we're going to have a problem with people uh, watching the game and and enjoying the games, if that's the case. Um, there's times in cup rugby where you just got to grind out a result, and that's fine. But the amount of kicking we're seeing in the games nowadays is something that needs to be looked at by World Rugby. The offside line, and I've said this for a number of years, is 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 a real problem. Um, and when I mean the offside line, I mean teams are so good now, and as you know, pushing right up on that offside line and even over it as a as a group, that the assistant referees are not not calling it. It's difficult for the referee to see it, and it's just play on. So if you have eight, ten guys in that front line who are charging off the line, there's going to be a lot of collision-based stuff, and and the the attacking team don't have the ball in their hand for for very long to be able to put some evasive footwork on or, or look to pass the ball. They're just tucking under the arm and running back at, at the opposition, and there's a big collision, another breakdown, another breakdown. So I think pulling back the defensive line is something I've called for for a number of years. Um, even a half a metre behind that hindmost foot that that is the defensive line. Now, tricky enough to police it, mm. but we need more support from the assistant referees. And the reason I say that it'll encourage attack is because if the out half or the loose forward gets the ball and he has a little bit more time and space, he can run a little bit more evasively um, and look to try and, you know, give a pass or, or or take on someone with some footwork. Whereas a lot of the time we're just seeing teams crash it up and then the ruck slows down and it's kick the ball into the ruck and it's a box kick. It's mm. horrendous stuff to watch. Yeah, it, it really is. And it'll be really, really interesting to see how things develop on the rules front over the next little while. Can, can I just ask then, considering you obviously watched a good bit of the All Blacks over the last little while, I'm just, just really interested in how they've developed tactically since 2019, I presume 2019 goes down as another disaster in the, in the history of the All Blacks. But have they stuck with that? Are they still playing with, with two playmakers? And have they gone even more attacking than they were in 2019? They're they're more attacking, I think, because McKenzie has been been full back and, and uh, amazingly well. You know, when the big big games come in, uh, Bowden Barrett will be in the team, whether it be at full back or fly half. But Richie Mwanga is just an incredible attacker, attacker. He scores tries, he makes line breaks, he's incredibly fast. Um, and to have his attacking threat, um, you know, he's not a renowned kicking out of hand fly half, even though his kicking game is quite good. And I would have chatted to Rog about him over the years with um, when he was with the Crusaders, and that's part of his game that's really, really improved. He's goal kicking, he's kicking out of hand, but it's just, it's... It seems to be a, a tactic from Foster that he wants to keep that attacking threat. And I know Bowden Barrett is, is an incredible attacker as well. But I think having two of those guys in your back line, uh, it's been flo- floated a little bit in the last couple of years, but obviously Joey Carberry has been injured about having the Carberry, um, Sexton, the two of them in the back line and, and adding more potency to it. 
to attack and having a playmaker, even as a 12. Um, so, um, look, there's, how long more will Johnny Sexton play? Who knows? I think um, well, is there a he's still a very talk? important player. Is there legitimacy yeah, in that I think talk there is. Yeah, well, I think, I think for Joey Carberry, everyone in Irish rugby would love to see Joey Carberry um, playing regularly. Um, back playing regularly for Munster and being a real option for Ireland you know you can play him in a number of positions 10 13 12 full back um, and having that ability to do that I think is is something that would be a big benefit to Andy Farrell um, but New Zealand's attack it's always been in a part of their mentality I mentioned the, the X factor you know Rico Ioani is is a game breaker pace power uh, Stevu Reese, these guys are, are individual phenomenons, if you like. Um, but obviously, you got to, you know, the inside man, then Aaron Smith, the pre- presentation, the ball, the speed of Rook is is something that's um, that's just incredible. The ball is just whipped away, and and it gives you that extra second or two. So for for Ireland, I think it's all about trying to trying to get more tempo and pace in their game and. Of um, you know the kicking game is still very much an important part of the game because mm. everybody's really good at the breakdown now. So you don't want to be messing around your own twenty-two, but it's having that ability to to add more strings to your to your attack is is really important for Ireland this season. And I think um, we may see some changes around that. You know, Gavin Coombs, Doris in the back mm. row. Um, I thought Caelan Blade was brilliant. Uh, for Connacht this year, he just adds an incredible threat. Gibson Park played well. You know, there's going to be pressure on Conor Murray, and um, I think, you know, it's it's something that Ireland need to add to and build on because we saw some positive signs towards the end of the Six Nation, um, particularly in that English game as well. I think um, they kind of cut England on the hop a little bit with some of their 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 you know, their attack and their ability to keep the ball for long phases and put footwork in the wider channels. So hopefully that will happen. Yeah, like it's it's really, so I don't know, maybe this is kind of like focusing too much on the All Blacks a little bit, but it's quite interesting to see where they are in this state of the World Cup cycle and then holding up a mirror to Ireland in that context. Okay, granted, South Africa won the last World Cup playing a very different style, so it kind of, fall, it kind of flies in the face of this argument. But is there a case to be made that like Andy Farrell is, is watching these games, seeing how the Rugby Championship is playing out, and saying, right, these are the sort of teams we need to be beating if we are going to finally get past the quarterfinal, for example, at the World Cup, and mirroring your style a little bit to suit it? Like, or or is, that just, is that just getting carried away a little bit by what other people are doing? Yeah, I don't think there's there's not there's very few teams, if any, can do what New Zealand do because it does come down to the quality they can select from the footballers, the natural footballers that they can pick um, right throughout the team. So throughout their forwards, guys are really comfortable on the ball, offloading, passing, being a scrum half sometimes. Um, I know it's always something that they've really, really pushed that the props can give a scrum half pass off a breakdown if needed. Um, so look, I think Ireland just got to focus on themselves. I think there's some good young players coming through. Um, someone like Robert Balancoon, that absolute out and out pace, um, you can't buy that. And I think that's something that would really benefit this Irish side to get in an X-factor player like that. I still think he needs to improve a little bit, obviously. Um, but there is reasons to be optimistic. Um and you don't mirror your game on New Zealand because it's, as I said, you can look at some of their attack for sure and and the variety they put in attack, but sometimes it's down to personnel and you've got to cut, cut your claw according to your measure. Yeah. And Northern Hemisphere rugby is different. Um, there's no point in trying to be overly expansive and it's lashing rain in November against the All Blacks. Um, you've got to get you know the basics right. But you know you go back to the try that... that um, they scored against New Zealand a couple of years ago, the, the chip kick from Stockdale. Um, Stockdale. You know, that's variety. And I think we'd love, I'd love to see some more of those kind of power plays or, or attack variation. You know, you saw with the Keith Earls try against England, overthrow, pop back inside from, um, you know, from uh, and, and Earls catches and, and scores. You know, a little bit of that. You can't do it every time, but I think it's just continuously striving to have a little bit more variety and 
trying to figure out how you can break down the opposition rather than how you can squeeze the opposition to get penalty points. Just on a final point then, just to go back to, to the dual playmaking thing, I, I think everybody agrees that maybe Ireland haven't actually figured out how to work it. Now, in fairness, dual playmaker may, may not be for Ireland whatsoever. As you say, there are a number of reasons why, why Ireland can't copy the Southern Hemisphere. But it probably is worth a look if Joey Carberry is going to be a central figure in this. Obviously, it's a risky thing to do at the moment, given Hugo Keenan's been amazing. Ireland's midfielders have been brilliant. But like in one of these November tests, is, is it worth trying Carberry in there at 15 or even in midfield and just seeing how it goes? Yeah, um, possibly. I think, um, you know, they, they, they play USA in the first game, mm. then Japan. I think, you know, you want to try and get yourself ready for that third game against New Zealand and then Argentina at the end. So it is an option, I think. You know, the Byrne brothers uh, are, are, could, could play it out half, either one of yeah. them. I think uh, Ross or... Um, I'm, I'm, Harry. I'm gone blank. Harry, Ross or Harry. And, and that could be the future. Harry Bond could be the future. He's big, strong, physical. So just because if Sexton doesn't play for the next couple of years and he does retire at the end of the next season, it doesn't mean that that dual playmaker role but is is gone completely. But mm. look, I think just with Carberry's brilliance and his footwork and stuff like that, he needs to obviously become more robust and, and get a long run without injuries to see his talents, uh, probably physically get up to speed. I think he struggled a little bit since he's come back just with teams targeting him um, physically. But that's understandable when you're out of the game for a long period of time. So, yeah, I think there is options. Of course, there's options there. There's, there's a lot of young those young players, particularly in that USA game that played really well. James Hume is someone from Ulster as well. And um, Craig Casey, of course, I didn't mention him as the scrum half. Um, he'll have something to say about that. So, um, Hugo Keenan is a brilliant footballer. Mm. I'd love to see Ireland try and get the ball into his hands more. Um, he runs brilliant lines and to try and use him in those wider channels a bit more. So, but look, it's easy, it's easy to talk about that and say, um, I just think you, you know, having that in your locker to be able to open up or have a go from, from deep when you need to be need to is is something that we look at New Zealand and you know if they're 10 points down with 10 minutes to go they can they can execute those passes under pressure and and you just feel that they're going to get themselves back in the game and they're going to score long distance tries or the need to yeah we'd love to be able to say that about Ireland but look it's it's um there is a bit of a transitional period between this World Cup and do we need to win these all these games in November no we don't I'd rather us be peaking um, for the World Cup this time. Yeah, I think everybody's with you on that, Alan. We've been uh, burnt enough times. Listen, Alan, great stuff. Uh, enjoy selling the eggs all day today. Cheers. And if, if you want, you can put in an order there. When when you finish up, you can send me a message for an order for some organic eggs. Where, where do we go? Is there a Facebook page or a Twitter page we can go on to? No, you can just send them to me. Send, send it to Alan Quinlan. Be, so, uh, but I anybody at home, Alan, just... I might, I might be bringing the revenue down on top of me here and I was selling eggs, but... Uh, <laughs> Hopefully not. They'll have a bit of sympathy on us. At Alan Quinlan 1 is where you want to tweet if you want to get your eggs in, if you're anywhere around tip today. Quinny, enjoy the weekend. Cheers, thanks. Great stuff there from Alan Quinlan. As ever, it is 9.31 on this Friday morning. OTBAM brought to you by Gillette. Good morning, Stark at Gillette. Put your best face forward with their new and improved razors.